great community and welcome back to the Hounds for Life podcast show. This is episode 10 and it's titled BJ and a very special lockdown greyhound show. I'm Maya and I'm Natasha and we are in completely lockdown here in New Zealand. Oh my. <laughs> um, and Natasha is my lovely co-host of the show today um, because we can only stay in our bubble these days yeah. there's no social contacting possible and Natasha is the girlfriend of my son and we are all together here in the bubble for four weeks or however long it takes our yeah. level four lockdown. To eliminate uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic in New Zealand uh, the New Zealand government has issued the four alert levels a month ago uh, we are under level four, the complete lockdown, and this is now the fourth week. Uh, when you are uh, under lockdown, you stay at home. Uh, that is for all New Zealanders in the whole country. And only essential businesses are uh, open and they are working under the guidelines for social distancing. The borders are completely closed. When we are moving into level three, um, the borders will still be closed and uh, travel will still be only local, but uh, some non-essential businesses will be able to open if they are able to uh, uh, trace the uh, contact persons, customers or clients, and if uh, they are able to apply the social distancing rules while conducting their business. In a level two, the borders will open again under restrictions and surveillance. Uh, the traveling within a New Zealand will uh, travel restrictions within New Zealand will be uh, widely lifted, and most of the businesses uh, can operate. Still, the uh, traceability of uh, contacts uh, needs to be possible, and uh, the social distancing rules will apply. Moving to level one means that for the normal people, everything seems to be normal, but there are some restrictions still in place. For example, mass gatherings over 500 people um, are not um, still not allowed. And uh, if you are sick uh, and have flu-like symptoms, you have to stay at home. School will be back to normal and most of the businesses. So not only that we all of a sudden saw ourselves completely isolated from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. um, also all my technical devices broke down, like every single one. I was left with only my phone. Yeah. I had nothing to edit footage, I had nothing to draw or do anything for the podcast. So that was a shock. Mm -hmm. uh, did get nothing repaired um, because obviously um, the shops they all closed down mm. and nobody really knew what was essential business because we did that the first time yeah yeah, yeah. all New Zealanders were like oh whoa so what what actually who can work who cannot work who so um, now it turned out that actually uh, computers are part of essential business because we are all meant to work at home and yeah. obviously we need to get our equipment um, you know Check devices uh, to work with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously it is a session. But, but but by the time I needed help, you know, my computer guy thought he couldn't. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> okay, without going into any uh, more boring details, mm. um, what happened is that I was um, left with nothing to do for the first um, 10 days of the lockdown mm -hmm. um, until my iPad Pro arrived that I have ordered and I was not actually sure if it would come through and yeah. it did oh my god so uh, and then I um, yeah and then I could start again to edit footage and actually find footage because mm -hmm. then the next uh, thing was I couldn't I had no honest interview but we progressed and figured something out. We did! Yeah! Hey, awesome! So, um, here comes Teddy saying hello. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we figured out um, how to do that all virtually now, like we do. We have Zoom. Thanks, thanks for Zoom. Um, and you will see our owner's interview on Zoom the first, for the first time this time with yeah. David. Yeah. Um, in Paranui, lockdown was interesting as well oh, because yes. we had German volunteers. Mm. And... Uh, um, visas expired and they couldn't get home uh, or they didn't want to go home because they didn't know if they need to go in quarantine there yeah. and 
so it was an interesting time so uh, it all worked out really well um, uh, two of our G four German volunteers decided to stay there long term the New Zealand uh, government was very flexible in this time so they all extended the visa to September just no question September. asked yeah oh. September. no question asked and uh, two of our German volunteers decided to go on the bringing home program so they just recently uh, after Eastern left um, because there's some charter flights um, which which takes uh, um, the last tourists uh, home. Mm. So that's all very well. It's actually fantastic organized thinking yeah. of it, right? We have such a good leadership here with our um, uh, Prime Minister. Oh, she's lovely. Jacinda, everybody loves her. She oh. is so amazing. <laughs> Keeps the spirit up. She's chatting on uh, Face on her Facebook mm. uh, um, nearly every day to, to the New Zealanders and um, yeah, it's, it's very good. We feel all very, very well looked after and safe. And then we had the gov government subsidies uh, were paid out immediately mm. um, for small uh, businesses uh, so they can continue to pay the wages, mm. um, uh, although they uh, do cannot do any business. So everything worked uh, actually very for the well. situation yeah. quite well. So yeah. we're probably actually a model leading here for the world, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah, I, I feel like it. It's like, Okay, so um, yeah, the animals at Paranui, they're loving it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. The foster dogs and the farm animals are loving it, having all the attention all day. Oh, yes. Um, our uh, long term or, or resident volunteer is um, also at home mm. and she's uh, going every day uh, and hang out with the animals. They don't know what hit them. <laughs> <laughs> A bit of soaking up all the long walks. Yeah, exactly. So this is the time, guys, to have a greyhound and pet it hard and long. <laughs> oh, especially if they're attention seeker. Yeah. Like Zookeeper. Like Zookeeper, yeah. She's loving the lockdown too, especially having Natasha here. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, other things changed a lot during the lockdown. We uh, obviously couldn't do any home checks for our prospective uh, greyhound owners. And we couldn't do meet and, meets and greets, which we normally do at mm. Paranui, at Hounds for Life Kennels. So uh, we now just figured a way that we actually can keep on doing rehoming by um, uh, go, having virtual home checks um, with Zoom or FaceTime or something like that. And then we also figured out how to contactless um, deliver or a greyhound if it's local. Um, uh, to the new owner. So that can all continue. Mm. We have still, because of the lockdown situation, Joshi, who else? Uh, Suede. Suede. And King. the girl, Lily. Lily. Yeah. Oh, Lily. Yeah. yeah, Lily there. So all three good to go home as soon as uh, they can actually leave. Um, uh, uh, Hans for life. And for this show, um, uh, we also had to bit, uh, improvise, mm -hmm. I would say, um, and just, or let's say, be resourceful. <laughs> yeah. Take what we had. So we had luckily, very luckily, we had uh, still an interview that was about to be aired. Uh, f um, um, the footage was done back in September up north with this lovely family um, a trainer um, facility uh, there led by Jace and uh, Days with her daughter um, Tori oh. and uh, yeah so we thought it would be a good idea to show you guys how your greyhound has actually lived uh, the few years uh, in his athletic uh, professional life before he retired uh, and became a couch potato on oh. your couch at home. <laughs> Comments! Oh yes! <laughs> we had, thank you so much for commenting. Now we had lovely comments coming through and interesting comments and inspiring comments as well. Oh, yeah. um, and we shall read some out for you and therefore I need, we both need our glasses. Hell yeah, we're blind. <laughs> Ta -da! Perfect. A um, few uh, comments that we want to share with you today. We cannot go through all the comments, um, but some were uh, nice and some were very interesting, and some uh, actually there's one we really want to talk about. So, um, uh, Sedelaney21 commented three days ago great info i'm adopting a greyhound tomorrow yay! yay congratulations and please let us know how it goes if you have any questions send us some photos maybe 
and some snippets, maybe even videos, oh. short footages. Yeah, that would be great. So thank you for for letting us know. Then we have, um, and she was actually commenting on this: the seven most frequently asked questions for prospective greyhound owners from our last episode nine. So we have one from Tom saying, "Cool video, keep it up." No, that's wonderful, that's eh? Lovely. Yeah, that was six days ago. Yeah. Okay, and then we have another short one. That's the same guy. Oh, that's another from Tom. Another from Tom. He's great. Um, ah, yeah. And then here's an uh, here's a comment from Jennifer Southall uh, two weeks ago. Thank you, Jennifer, for watching the show and um, uh, commenting on it. Um, she says, "Love your show. Thank you." But less talking and more about the dogs would be wonderful. Thank. Uh, but thank you. Cheers, Jenny. So Jenny, thank you very much for watching and enjoying the show first and foremost. Um, we are a podcast, so podcast by definition is talking more than anything else. Mm. Um, you might remember podcasts are normally radio where you don't yeah. have any video footage at all, it's just talking. So the idea about the Hounds for Life podcast show is that we are actually talking. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's about greyhounds <laughs> and um, the wonderful medium of video and and making everything visual is just an add-on so we can actually bring also the pictures of greyhounds and um, all these expert interviews and the um, owners interviews and the how-to videos and everything to you in also in a visual form which we hope is very edutaining edutaining isn't that the new word educating and educating Edutaining. Educational entertainment. That was just the idea of our show. Um, so we will talk pretty much all the time. And I hope, Jenny, you do enjoy what we're talking about. And we'd love to talk to you. Uh, so just keep on uh, commenting and let us know what you think. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, this one's from Zoe K saying, both my husband and I work. Although these days my husband and I are working from home. Although these days my husband is working from home, we are probably going to get another greyhound on Saturday and I'm very scared about the separation anxiety. We're also getting one with that is cat tolerant. Any advice would be very helpful. Thank you. Now isn't that a coincidence? Yes, very. <laughs> because what, what how-to video do we have in this episode? How to train your greyhound to be at home with your cat. Yay! <laughs> yay! So here we go, Zoe. This is for you. <laughs> uh, and uh, our how to segment, um, we uh, we created a cartoon or animation um, to visually show you how we um, uh, introduce the greyhounds to the cat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How and vice versa, the cat to the greyhound. And this is um, something that is developed by Night Drive Greyhound, uh, which we work with the um, uh, uh, nationwide. Um, rehoming agency adoption agency and uh, they have uh, three uh, three a four sheet instruction um, which is the basis of this um, uh, cartoon and the, this is very well approved yeah. um, this way of doing it but we will talk about that later when it yeah. comes <laughs> so um, in this lockdown situation, of course, it's not all about greyhounds. So we all uh, do find other meaningful things to do. Give me the socks. <laughs> so you might remember in one of the first shows, uh, the how-to segment was how to knit a cowl for your greyhound. Oh, yes. And if you're coming into the winter season, which we do here in the Southern Hemisphere now, mm. this will be the time, if we haven't done so, to get into your knitting needles. Here we go. <laughs> And I had actually lots of time in this lockdown to knit and we knit a lot um, and I knit cowls for myself but also socks. I love to knit socks so this is one pair of socks and that's for me and then for Natasha. I, I love knitted socks. I knitted another pair of socks. Here very we go. Beautiful. <laughs> So that's also what we do. I wonder if I could knit socks for greyhounds as well. I might do. Oh my god, that Actually. would look so cute in your pajamas as well. Aww. Exactly. I give it a go. Okay. Okay, now let's go into the show and you enjoy it. And before we go into the show, please don't forget, if you like it, put the thumbs up, give us some comments and most importantly, 
hit the subscribe subscription button and put the mod notification on to never miss an episode. Hell yeah. Yay! Okay, <laughs> enjoy! See you later! Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Our first segment is our owner's interview. Mm -hmm. It is with David from Blenheim. He uh, has a greyhounds for seven years now and he will talk about that on the show. And the special thing is it was our first Zoom interview. Oh, yes. yes. It took a while to get there though. It took a while but figured everything out. Um, the quality uh, of the videos completely depends on the internet connection. So if you find him a little bit blurry, not so much. This is just solely purely because where he was while he was mm. uh, on his computer. You see how far the love with your greyhounds goes when uh, David accidentally is talking about his daughter as a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> a human puppy. Oh, it was adorable watching that footage. Absolutely adorable. You enjoy. Hello, welcome David to the Hounds for Life podcast. Thank you so Hello. much to be on the show today and our um, own and make our own of interview with us. No problem. Good to be here. So in this challenging times, um, we had to slightly rearrange our arrangement <laughs> about the interview because I originally was all set up and go to you with all my equipment to yeah. take footage in your beautiful home with your dogs and the family. And then, whoom, the lockdown came. Mm. <laughs> bit different. Bit different, eh? And then now it took yeah. me a bit of time to sort out the new um, virtual technology. But now here we are. Brilliant. On a Zoom conference. Awesome. So, David, um, this is the episode 10 of the podcast show, and we are really keen to hear about your Greyhound story. Uh, well, I've had Greyhounds for about seven years. Uh, I was in Christchurch originally, and it was after the earthquake, so I just had a, a promotion, so I had a little bit more spare money at the end of each day. And I was feeling, to be honest, pretty low. You know, broken city. I was living by myself in my own home. Didn't really have anything to, to share it with. So I'd always wanted a dog, uh, but working full time as well, I wanted to be, I wanted to have a dog that could handle living in a small place by himself for a while. Uh, and I did a bunch of research and basically the best apartment dogs uh, either, and this blew my mind because I thought it'd be something small, it was either greyhounds or Mastiffs, and Mastiffs are huge and slobber everywhere. Beautiful dogs, but we've got so many greyhounds out and about that just sort of, I didn't really want to know what happened to them after they finished racing. So I thought I'll, I'll meet them, and I met up uh, with the guys in Christchurch, which was uh, Hounds for Homes. Uh, Joe was absolutely fantastic. So I, I walked my first greyhound uh, around Hagley Park. It wasn't my one, it was a, one of the groups and I just fell in love with them. There's something enchanting about greyhounds and like nothing else. So I got one, I got Waffler, who was a beautiful red greyhound and he was, he was mental. Uh, I suspect he sort of had a sort of doggy version of uh, Asperger's, um, but he was like everybody's favorite nerdy cousin who doesn't quite fit in with the other dogs, uh, but we just, we got on so well. So it was an interesting period when we were both sort of working each other out and how our family, the two of us, was going to work. And um, we very quickly, I think it was a difficult first month, but after that, it was just fantastic. And after a year of having him, I met a lady and, and we moved in and we got a second one, which was his racing name was Ramrada. Erin uh, named him BJ, which was short for Blackjack. Uh, and he was a kennel mate of Waffler. So they're both with the Roberts down in Christchurch. They knew each other. They were best mates right from the get-go. And in many ways, BJ is the perfect 
dog. Uh, he's gentle. He's a goofy giant. He just wants to cuddle and sleep all day. So he would have been a dreadful dog to get first off because I wouldn't have understood everything that needs to happen with the dog. I just would have assumed all dogs were as good as BJ and then I would have struggled with any other dog. Uh, and had a, had a, had a girl, a wee human puppy, uh, Adriana, and uh, she's still with me, but mum left. Uh, and so we moved up to Blenheim uh, to move in. So I'm in an intergenerational household here with uh, me, Adriana, my daughter, and mum and dad, and the dogs. But unfortunately, well, Waffler passed away last year. Uh, yeah, it was tough. Yeah. Not expected. Yeah. We never forget our dogs that have passed, regardless how many after come after. Yes. Oh, yeah, and he, he and I were, were close. Mm. So, mm. And BJ was there. I mean, he died at home. He died in, in my arms with BJ, cuddled up, cuddled up to him as well. So it was oh, as good a situation as can happen. Uh, I'm glad it happened here so that BJ wasn't, BJ hadn't seen Waffler go off into the car to the vet and then not come home. I think that would have been really difficult. Well, that's a really good point, David. I never thought of that. But if you have um, multiple animals in the house, it's probably really the best way to have them at home when they pass away. Yes. Yeah, and as difficult as the whole process was, that was the silver lining. So he's, um, yeah. I mean, we got a bit worried about BJ being by himself. Well, we, we, we went away for a holiday in Karamea. And we uh, had BJ staying at, at the ranch. Yeah. Got a special dog staying with you then too. Uh, so for um, the viewers who don't know us, uh, Hounds for Life has also a boutique homestay. And we are inviting our gorgeous uh, greyhounds that had uh, found a new home to come and stay for us um, at the holidays, especially when the humans want to go on holidays, of course. <laughs> but uh, um, David was one of our first clients and he brought Waffler and BJ. Um, because we didn't know you before, right? Because you had your dogs no. in Christchurch. Yeah, yes. and I mean, the thing I love about it is both Waffler and BJ were very, very good racing greyhounds, which meant they had a high prey drive, which meant I couldn't put them in a normal kennel because they would have been all over the place in terms of small dogs or cats or rabbits or I don't know what stays in kennels, but I'm sure there'll be things that the dogs would have barked at. <laughs> exactly. Um, our place is uh, designed uh, because we keep our foster greyhounds there as well in the same facilities, uh, completely designed for greyhounds. And although we have fa farm animals and um, they are well kept in good fencing and they are large animals and um, they are well respected by the greyhounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, David, are you ready for uh, the five uh, questions, surprise questions for greyhound owners? Absolutely. Okay, let's give it a go. So, um, number one is, what is BJ's favorite thing to do? He's got a few, actually. Uh, but number one would probably be cuddle. He's a big softy. He just loves human interaction. So, he, he will come and look for cuddles. And, um, yeah, he's a cuddler. Okay, he's a cuddler. And what is number two? What is BJ's, or uh, let's say, the least favorite thing about BJ that you would like to share with us? Yeah, I think his least favorite thing in the world is having a bath. Oh, he's not a water dog. He's not a water dog. No, he is terrified of the water. Uh, it's really difficult, actually, even to get him to go outside to go to the toilet if it's raining. He does not like the water. That's so interesting because you have a new addition. That would be my fifth question because you have a new addition. You have a new girl now, Foxy, yes. which we have featured in one of the episodes as well as the Foster of the Week, which found mm -hmm. a home with you and BJ, which is gorgeous. And she, as you actually can see in the footage, um, mm -hmm. loves the water. She does, yes. <laughs> so how do you go about that? Oh, she's happy as. Uh, actually, she doesn't just love the water. She loves everything so uh, we've now got several holes in the backyard where she's discovered she loves digging 
Oh, okay. I had a I had an owner interview. They had the same problem <laughs> and they yeah. were very pragmatical about it and said they just planted a lemon tree wherever the greyhound dug. Would have a lot of lemon trees, actually. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> have an orchard. Uh, David, um, what was your happiest moment with BJ? <sighs> happiest? Uh, actually, uh, we went to Canada for three weeks. Uh, and just seeing him again for the first time, because he stayed with mum and dad up here, uh, seeing him again and just seeing how much he, he sort of levitated when he saw us come back. He was absurdly happy to see it. So, yeah. Wonderful. Other than seeing him every day and taking him for walks every day, just his reaction, you know, you realise how much you mean to him, which is really nice. Yes. So just uh, just another additional question comes to my mind because you live in such a unique, wonderful, uh, multi-generational house. How is that for your two greyhounds at the moment uh, with three generations? How does that go? They're, they're in seventh heaven. Uh, I mean, at the moment, you know, with the lockdown, we're all at home. Uh, so they get affection multiple times a day from multiple sources. Uh, with my four-year-old as well, she's got a lot of teddy bears, which are somewhat looking similar to sometimes the two toys. So Foxy loves sneaking into her room and stealing a teddy bear to run out and cuddle on the couch. So there's occasional arguments <laughs> with that. <laughs> But no, they're, um, they love having Nan and Grandad close by and me and uh, Adrian. And of course, we're doing several walks a day now yeah. just to stay sane and get outside. You know, and uh, so they're definitely enjoying that. Yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. Look, it was so great to have you on the show, finally, David. And, <laughs> and uh, I hope I see you again in, uh, in person somewhere soon, and then we can up make an update and have an interview about Foxy with you. Sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, for now, um, yeah, stay safe, stay sane, <laughs> stay at home, and cuddle your greyhounds a lot, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See so we have rehomed Enki to her lovely home in Nelson. This is how them and their already dog, Chester, played on their first day together. Very cute. Our community snippets. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> Is our expert interview with the trainer and his family. They are owning a small family business uh, next to Feeling on the North Island of New Zealand uh, where they have around about 20 greyhounds at one time uh, and uh, they opened the doors for us so we can show you guys how your greyhound has been living before he became a couch potato on your couch. Yeah. And <laughs> um, they are raising uh, puppies and then they train them and then after they have uh, finished their athletic career they are going to be rehomed. And that's where we come in. Yeah. Um, so we thought it would be super interesting for you to see how they actually have lived before uh, that time. And it is super interesting. However, it was a rainy day. Uh, we were not able to go outside with our equipment and take footage of all the facilities there. But we have a lovely interview and some footage from the kennels, the indoor kennels. Um, and you see some puppies running around on the paddocks out there. Adorable it is was so cute. <laughs> so cute. Adorable is um, Tori, uh, the little um, girl. Uh, she has her very own racing greyhound, yes, and she is a dog handler already in oh. her own right. Oh, <laughs>
Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hounds for Life podcast. Today I'm here with Jake, Days, and Tori. And we are here at their training facility where they train racing greyhounds. So today we're going to ask them a few questions and they're going to show us around and let us know what it's like for greyhounds before they get rehomed as pets. So the first question I have for you guys is, in a general day, what is your routine for your training greyhounds? Um, most time, most days we start at um, 7.30 in the morning. We come down and all the dogs go out, um, go out and we've got 20 empty pens. Mm -hmm. They all go out individually in their own pen. They all go out, go out, clean their kennels, come back, straighten all their beds up, they come back in and we do the same till they're all done. And then it's breakfast time. Nice. Um, what do you guys feed them for breakfast? Tux biscuits. Nice, no wonder mine love it. <laughs> um, and so after you fed them, um, then what, what, what's the process and after that? On a Monday and a Wednesday we have races, mm -hmm. so it's basically get ready for the races. They're well aware of. And they know because they get a bit of a different breakfast on race day. Oh yeah. So they know it's race day. And so what do they get on race day? Just get a couple of vitamins and oh, wow. a bit of electrolytes in the morning just oh, to awesome. make sure that they are all right for the races. Cool. And then, We've got, a, we've got a lot of therapy things that we do with them as well, so mm -hmm. they also go on that in the mornings and amongst it all, so then we yeah, on Monday, Wednesdays, they get lo we load up and go to the races, any mm -hmm. other day we just carry on um, making sure the place is clean and tidy mm -hmm. and Which it is. carry on carry on like checking dogs and treating dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of therapy do they get, like kind of water therapy or just massages? Uh, we've got a... Um, Equisage mat wow. that um, is vibration therapy that they go on, and we've also got ultrasound machines and oh. magnetic. And you have that all here. Yep. Wow. It's all in the kennels. We've got a magnetic module as well. So intense. So you can sort of like if you open the ones that go in there regularly, if they sort of know that it's their time to sort of um, go in there, you can open the kennel door and they'd run in and they know what they're doing in there. They, they quite like it. it. Yeah. Yeah, they love it. Um, and on an average race day, how many greyhounds would you take with you? Uh, we normally average between eight and ten every every race, most race days at the moment. And but do they um, do they get an ice cream after? I hear some people do ice creams. Jake does. <laughs> <laughs> he won't want people to know, but yeah. <laughs> we can cut that out. And, uh, on hot days, it's, on, ho cream. on hot days, it's the ice. A lot of actually, a lot of people give them ice cream before they go into the kennel block on a race day. Oh. Oh. Just yeah, just to help cool them down. Yeah, because it so. probably does get quite hot, hey. Do you have any of your own pet greyhounds? Yes, we've got a 14 year old that lives in our house. And we've also got, there's a couple down here that have been brood bitches. And they will end up coming up to the house. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, we'll, we've always, I've always had, like, I've had this greyhound for 12, 10 or 12 years, oh. the one that's at the house. She's been, well, actually, I raced her and bred from her. and. She's yeah, up she's at the house. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I would hate to think how many I've seen to be pets. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hate to think. There's been a lot. Okay. Do you guys in any way prepare the greyhounds for retirement? Yes. We quite often we take it. We take trailer loads that are ready to go over to Fatima and Rachel's, mm -hmm. and their dog, their classes, obedience classes, and all that, and just oh, yeah. interact them with the little dogs and. All that, so basically we know what ones need a bit more work and what yep. ones don't. And that, and uh, my four year old daughter runs around the kennels and we know if they're any good with kids or not. She's so cute, hey? She runs around and... And she knows all their names. Yep. Yeah, it's really so, cute. No, she... Like, we, we do quite a bit of work with them. Like, there's not often that many of ours really need a lot of work. They just need to really click into the home life. Yeah. So when do you retire the races? Uh, there's a whole heap of different stages. Some of them are just too slow mm -hmm. and are no good for racing, so it's time to go and be a pet. Mm -hmm. And some of them just get old. Yeah. You know, and like we've got one in here that we actually tried to retire at the start of this year because he hurt himself. Mm -hmm. He's actually broken both of his back legs. Wow. At different times. And he's come back racing and he's now had 180 starts on he Friday night. It. On Friday night, he had 180 start and just got beat. And yeah, then he broke. He hurt himself again in January, and I said, "That's it. He's retired." Mm -hmm. And he started going to daycare in the back of the car with Tori Lee to pick her up, and that. 
and then he just absolutely drove me insane. Because he was going to stay here, he started whinging and actually yeah. I had to fix him before he could come up to the house. Yeah. And I said, no, nah, that's it, he's going back to the track, I'm just going to give him a run and he went faster than any of my race dogs. And I was like, okay, then and now we've started racing, he's probably won another 10,000 since and he's just carries on and on and on like a year. He just, he just loves it. Yep. He's awesome. But I don't think I'd ever find another dog that had a heart like his yeah. that would. And, and he's not, he's not like, he can stand even the stirrups going around, he'll stand beside you, he's not even... Like he's just a man chase, he's just yeah. an absolute lovely, just lovely dog, he wants to race. Yeah. He got big by a nose, he led everywhere but the post on Friday night and had a 180th start. Oh, that's amazing. And what was his name? Corborn Ridge. Um, what's the fastest greyhound you've ever had? Like, what was their speed, do you know? I know I've run, done beside a car at the beach mm -hmm. and we've got up to 90 kilometres an hour and uh, That's like a cheetah! They're running. Oh my god! Uh, they're, and they've been running, like... You can see them not far behind us in the car. That is so We run them with a motorbike yeah. on the straight track here and they can get up, up to 180, then get up to 70, 75k just in 100 meters, 180 meters oh, from end to end. That's insane. So the motorbike, so. So we're gonna head off now and have a look around. So come on, let's go. See ya. See ya. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. So today's how-to segment is about how to train your greyhound to come home to your cat. Um, I actually train cats at my home and what you need to know is sometimes they're very stubborn, sometimes they like it. They, it's very hard depending on the cat. Um, with my own personal experience, I have a cat, she's black and white and her name's Pokey. And she was very easy to train and then we have another cat, her name is Falcon and uh, she is literally the devil. <laughs> <laughs> well she's, she's a sweet dog, dog, I mean cat, but she's hard to train and she's good. Now you need a greyhound. Yeah, and now I just need a greyhound, mum, dad. <laughs> <laughs> very good, we find the right greyhound for you, for sure. So you can actually follow our training video, yeah. how to train the greyhound on the cat. Perfect. Or the cat on the greyhound, however you look at it. It would have been so hard to stage uh, the cat training program with my cat Florina and my greyhound Silky and Bella. Mm -hmm. I was just picturing uh, all this effort and equipment and spending a whole day and then you end up with footage which doesn't even show remotely. Yeah. <laughs> how it looks like in real life yeah. when you train. Mm. So um, yeah, I decided uh, to use um, the um, electronic drawing device, um, iPad Pro and Procreate, which I used uh, before in the episode where I showed you how to illustrate your greyhound, uh, to draw an ca animated cartoon. So I hope that's a good visual for you. <laughs> uh, and it's all based on a real experience over the last um, I don't know, 13 years I think oh that my. Nightgrave um, Greyhound has with uh, rehoming greyhounds also successfully um, uh, into cat households, which we are obviously one of them because uh, when we got our greyhounds, mm -hmm. uh, Bella and Silky, we had Florina, our cat, and uh, Bella was very easy with her. I can't even recall that it was a fuss at all. I, 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 but with Silky it was, I oh took boy. me two months and I followed exactly what you will see in the cartoon and now I'm absolutely certain they are totally safe together and um, even friends and uh, there's no problem, I don't need to reword. You have to put in this effort. Yeah. Some, some dogs are much more easier or some cats, 
Uh, others are much more difficult, but if uh, the uh, agency that you're using for, uh, um, uh, for getting your greyhound is saying your dog uh, is, ex um, is uh, cat trainable because they have um, assessed the dog on cats, which they do, um, then you can be sure you can do it. Mm. And this uh, video hopefully will help you with that. And the key is just patience. And it's patience, 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 patience that's it. How to cat train a retired greyhound. If you are living with a cat and you decide you want to have an addition to your family and go to adopt a retired greyhound, there are several precautions you have to take and measures you have to do to make sure you set them both up for success. Your cat might be very startled when you see you coming back with a um, dog, so keep her in the house so she cannot run away and hide for days on end. Obviously, then you have no chance uh, to train them on each other. When you bring the greyhound in the house, uh, please uh, take uh, the muzzle that you get from your adoption agency and put it on and put them on a leash and introduce them very gently. Make sure, a tip here, not to uh, carry your cat around. It looks too much like a toy and will engage uh, the greyhound in fetching games with a cat. What you also want to invest in is a crate. Um, you put uh, your greyhound in the crate for resting time, which is great for you and a great relief for the cat as well. And your greyhound comes crate trained, so he will not mind a bit. Try it the other way around as well. Put the cat in the crate and let the um, greyhound roam around. The cat is not a, a pack animal, but the greyhound is. The greyhound learns to accept the cat as the pack leader when he is supposed to wait with his dinner until the cat is finished. The best thing to make sure he understands his position in the pack is to let the greyhound observe the cat eating dinner, muzzled and on the leash, until the cat is completely finished and then you can take the bowl with the remains to the dog's place and let him or her finish uh, the cat food and then serve his dinner after. When you leave the house, uh, please uh, separate the cat and the dog in different rooms or crate the dog um, for the time that you are away to keep both safe. A brilliant tool uh, to educate the greyhound uh, to not do things is, is just simple water in a spritzer spritz bottle. It doesn't like the water on the nose and will soon learn that whatever behavior it was not uh, desirable, whatever he or she does, did. This especially is when he's chasing or lunging towards a cat. Now, when you manage to get your cat and your greyhound to become friends in the house, which is great, well, yeah, this doesn't mean that they are outside the same. So keep the muzzle on your greyhound and every time you let him out, um, uh, unsupervised or even supervised, especially in the night, because as you know, our cats are gray in the night. The dog is a sighthound and it might mistaken the running away house cat for a possum. When you follow these simple steps and uh, put a little bit of patience into that, after a few weeks or a few months, you will see your greyhound and the cat became friends forever. Yay! Two thumbs up and all the paws! So now our adoption greyhound is Joshi. I've known him for about a month and he's such a sweet and such managed, a good mannered boy. He's honestly the sweetest. Mm -hmm. And I think I've fallen in love with him, so you better steal him before I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Great. <laughs> Introducing Joshi, um, our foster ready to be rehomed, three-year-old brindle boy. He has great manners, is cuddly, good with kids and so handsome. This is our lovely Joshi. He's been here for six weeks now. He's ready for adoption and he's just a loving boy and he's really so cute and funny. Sometimes he's a bit silly, <laughs> but that, that's what he, it makes him so lovely. Um, he loves to cuddle, but also he loves to play, not for too long, but he loves chasing the toys. 
Josie and me have been at the beach with two other greyhounds and Josie was just amazing walking next to the other greyhounds on the leash. He's always close to me so he's really not annoying. He's really nice and easy to handle and yeah, he's curious. He's just the perfect companion. <laughs> Last but not least, instead of uh, seeing us going on a walk, which is quite a rare, this time, I mean, it's not rare, we walk every day on the lockdown situation, That's but it's always the same walk. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit boring, uh, but we still have a lovely other snippets from Inky and the Ducks Hound, uh, Chester, uh, where they... Uh, where you can see they are doing zoomies in their garden. Um, actually, if I say they, guess what? It's only one. Yeah, one's trying it Try well. Doing zoomies, the other's more trying. So guess who <laughs> that is? <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the show and we just want to shout out to you. Thank you so much for watching, enjoying, uh, supporting um, uh, the podcast show by uh, subscribing to all our subscribers out there. It is because of you that we are continuing to produce a show. Um, we have a goal. We want to uh, reach um, this year a thousand subscribers. Yep. It is very important uh, on the World Wide Web um, to be more seen yep. um, uh, if we have more than thousand subscribers. And uh, we are very uh, happy uh, to do the show, um, but we can only continue to do the show if we got the community support, which is you. And that's yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. So please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel, put the notification on, um, spread the news to your friends and family and everybody who you can think of is remotely interested in uh, <laughs> hearing and seeing podcasts about yeah. grounds. <laughs> so, yes. Stay safe, stay sane, stay at home. Kia ka! Bye!
<laughs> I said bloopers, the bloopers are really funny. <laughs> okay, um... So, long story, short cord, uh, short, sh long story... Shortly. Short? Short, cut short. Shortly? Sh short story, cut... No. Short story, short. Wait. Okay, hang on. We, long we story, short. Lo okay, yeah, okay, yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs>